Welcome everyone to our interview with Mark Wildman. So stoked to have you here, Mark. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Summer. So we will be covering, Mark will be covering three topics uh, in depth, as in depth as we can on a little interview here. And the first question he'll be answering is on how clubs and steel mace are interconnected. Second question he'll be going into depth on is steel mace clubs and posture and how they allow us to shift from uh, postural alignments. And the third question goes into uh, levels of competency for people that are self-coaching at home and then people that are training in person with people that are like ourselves that are trained in clubs and base. So without further ado, the first question, Mark, uh, tell us a bit about the origin of clubs and steel mace and how they are interconnected as tools and even just sharing about how you learned with clubs first and mace later on. Uh, clubs and mace are some of the oldest possible ways to train. Uh, they're the, we know that they are the oldest ways to train that humanity is trained with, right? So heavy clubs pop up all throughout history as the weapons of heroes, uh, Gilgamesh, Hercules, uh, uh, the monkey king, right? The monkey king. Um, so there's three major cultures right there. Um, heavy clubs, uh, are what I learned first. And I originally learned them. Uh, I tried to learn them because I was trying to learn Shaolin golden melon hammer because I had, because I was studying uh, Shaolin martial arts at the time. And I was trying to go through the traditional forms of strength training uh, from, you know, the ancient world. Uh, because I'm pretty sure that people who did stuff for 5,000 years have a much better idea of how to do things because they actually needed to have strength in the way that they needed to. Um, but they did not have all the modern inputs, right? People weren't training specifically for, um, how do we call this? Specifically for physique, because I think that physique is more of a modern phenomenon that came after the advent of the camera, correct? Um, so people in the past used to just need to be really strong at what they needed to do. And, um, uh, so I was trying to get away from physique training and I was trying to get back to actually being strong. Uh, golden melon hammer was what I was looking for when I came across heavy club swinging for the first time, golden melon hammer would be thought of as like super short mace, one in each hand with extremely complex forms of movement patterns for the legs. So using all of the sport specific movement patterns from the leg, uh, from legs, footwork drills, from battlefield martial arts, martial arts that were designed for unlevel ground and that were designed to fight multiple opponents. So there's all these different types of footwork and there's all these different types of movement patterns throughout history. And I was looking for the one that I was most interested in. Uh, I came across heavy club swinging first um, as the only thing that I could find uh, that was equivalent to what I was looking for. And I started running through that. Um, and the modern lens of heavy club swinging uh, starts people more at a, more from a conventional perspective, building out your clean, your squat, your press, your deadlift patterns, and then turning all of those into rotation patterns. Um, so that's where I started learning. I actually came into mace much, much later because 15 years ago, steel mace were not something that was commercially available, uh, but clubs were. So the old school guys all kind of started at heavy club swinging, and then we all moved towards mace as they became much, much, much more affordable. Uh, they started at, you know, $400 for each mace, and now a 10-pound mace can be as cheap as $30. So it's just become vastly more accessible. When I think about the complexity of how these two things interrelate, I think of heavy clubs as being an intermediate level of complexity with an intermediate weight. And I think of mace swinging as being a extremely high level of complexity for most people, uh, up to an infinite level of complexity, but with a much, much lighter weight. So when I think of things, I think of things in a series. We start with the idea of like Olympic lifting with a barbell, because that's how most people in the modern world think of training. And we have simpler movements, move, movements that move straight up and down, mm -hmm. um, but add more and more load to the system. And then from there, I move to, I jump to the idea of kettlebells, where you take load, you make it much lighter and you shove all the load to one side of the body 
and you have a lot more cross body stabilization, but you have kind of the same general ideas as Olympic lifting. And then we go down in weight and we increase the length of the lever and we get to heavy club swinging. And then one step beyond that is a longer lever with even more complexity, a nearly infinite amount of complexity as mace. Mm -hmm. um, so these ideas are all in my mind related and they stack on top of each other. But I think that heavy club swinging and mace do something that no other type of training can do or does do in modern training. And that is able is that, and that is being able to take our basic movement patterns, turn them into circular or rotational training coordinates, and then move up in a progressive way. So I think heavy club swinging is much closer to the pure science of Olympic lifting um, because it's more limited. And mace swinging is taking uh, throwing patterns and stepping patterns and making them infinite. Uh, modern steel mace is the closest to what I was looking for when I started this journey, which is like Shaolin golden melon hammer. Um, it's just the handle is longer and you tend to use one at a time, but you can use two at a time. And they, but they interlace with each other. And this all comes back to the idea of like, what are the most important patterns that we can work on? Um, our clean, our swing, which is our deadlift pattern, our snatch, our press, our squat, and some type of get up. Um, and then uh, I think of heavy club swinging in that vein, but with rotation coordinates. And I think of steel mace as being pure throwing patterns, which is the thing that does separate humanity from everything else on the planet. So, you know, we should be very good at it. And for $30, you can have an infinite amount of complexity with your throwing pattern and you can train forever. Sweet. So Mark and I have been hosting Steel Mace uh, staff and club workshops here at Floshala. However, this month, uh, September 23rd through 25th, Mark's coming out to Floshala to do a strictly Steel Mace and clubs workshop. So I'm going to just cover our equipment here because I get comments on my YouTube, I'm sure Mark does as well, about the sizes and weights of equipment, just to kind of give you the rundown of why we call them heavy clubs. We actually want to have you swing something heavy because then your body registers the toy Work, the the pull. Uh, there's just so much more information given to your nervous system when you actually swing the heavy club. So I actually have a 15 pound club bell here. Uh, this is a tack fit club, and uh, you can order these from tack fit. We have on it clubs. There's so many distributors. This is a 10 pound mace here from on it. You can get them from set for set. I'm sure Mark has a ton of recommendations as well. And then this is a seven pound steel mace which I will be teaching with the Steel Mace Vinyasa content with because we're using a lot more dynamic movement, a lot of yoga and flow-based transitions. You can definitely use the 10 pound as well. I find a lot of male-bodied folks will use the tens, uh, but Steel Mace Vinyasa was designed to, to be used with the seven. Um, so yeah, Mark just described a bunch of the content that he'll be touching on, and we're really hoping to bridge uh, the the gap between steel mace and clubs at this workshop and this is the first ever workshop of that we've taught really merging these two tools and these two implements so we invite you to implore and to check it out um, next question how are these tools good for posture specifically like postural deviations uh, the main things that you see when people come to you with non-upright spines or pain or low back issues like how how do these translate to actually helping a person feel better in their in their spine uh the human body is very specific and it's supposed to do very specific things and a lot of modern training does not help people do it um the human body does throwing patterns and that's what separates us from kind of everything else on the planet right uh lions don't have throwing patterns rhinoceros don't have throwing patterns whales don't have throwing patterns um, humans have throwing patterns and that is all related to how our shoulder works in conjunction with our wrist, our elbow, our spine, our hip, our knee, and our ankle. All of these things are supposed to line up with each other. Um, a lot of modern training does not accentuate those movements and people are supposed to get them from sport training. But a lot of people aren't getting sport training after a certain point in their life. After, say, high school, they you know, fall away from sports and they get into just pure gym training. Uh, gym training tends to lift straight up and straight down. Olympic lifting, straight up, straight down. 
not a lot of rotation in it, not a lot of cross body stability in it, although there could be some, but it's not common. Um, so people in the modern world have some posture problems because we live in the modern world. We, ch we tend to be more chair shaped because we sit down at work, we sit down in the car, we sit down to travel, we sit down in front of the TV at night. And this alters our posture from what it should be. Uh, by swinging heavy clubs and swinging mace, we can restore the basic movement patterns of what we should have independent of sport training. Um, so when I think of something like heavy club swinging, I think of inside circles, outside circles, and shield cast being the most important thing. Instead of lifting straight up and straight down, we start from a neutral position and we learn to turn each direction equally. This drastically helps people's posture because we are actually rotating the spine. Uh, the spine has a bunch of joints in it because it's designed to move and it's designed to specifically rotate. So when we do things like heavy club swinging, we start to reinstitute rotation in basic complexity. And then when we do something like steel mace, we really restore what the shoulders should be doing. And that balances the musculature on the front side of our body with the back side of our body. There's no artificial movement in either club or mace. So the body returns to a neutral position just by training, even by training for a few months. Um, and then that training can be infinite. It can go on forever, which causes the body to return itself to a more natural position. Uh, we're, of course, not living in a, purely in a purely primitive world. We are still members of a modern society. So we're not going to be exactly uh, the way that posture probably should be. If we were actually living in a primitive society or a Stone Age society, our posture would be even more different. But I think we can get about 95% of the way there just by balancing the movement patterns that the human body should do. And think about that as throwing patterns throwing patterns equally on both sides of the body, left hand towards the center line, right hand towards the center line, left hand away from the center line, right hand away from the center line. If we just get those basic movement patterns back, then our posture tends to balance itself out in the middle, or that's at least how I think of it. Oh my gosh. I love the answer. I love just going into depth with you, Mark, because I know you have so many tutorials that you're really showing the form and it's so strict on, you know, where to put the elbows and how to stand and how to, you know, do all of the like tactile elements of, of it, but really learning the why behind it is I think what our students and our followers are looking for next. So, um, yeah, I'm super excited to go in depth with you at this workshop, as well as our upcoming, uh, Thailand retreat too. Uh, Mark, I'm going to throw you a little curveball. So when we were talking about the Thailand retreat and started planning it, um, you were really dedicated to having it be not just a retreat, but a, a training retreat and it being really focused on training. So a lot of times you go to a, a retreat and we eliminate any of the work or any of the effort. You're just kind of like weighted on hands and hand and foot. But for us, it's really important to have that that journey and to get there uh, and be cross training these tools. So our game plan is to basically cross train steel mace club staff, steel mace club staff. So tell me a bit about your why behind why you think it's so beneficial to have that deep immersion experience for a five day, like eight hours a day window. Uh, I'm about to get super nerdy on this idea. And I'm going to relate this to like the concept of the hero's journey. And the hero's journey is a cycle that people need to go through throughout their life in order to continue to develop as an individual. Um, but one of the main ideas in that is that you need to go away from where you are at. You need to meet a bunch of people who are going to help you change the way you think. You go through a process that you, uh, I'm going to say can't escape, but not can't escape, but it's neurologically can't escape. Um, and you go through this process of learning and changing over the course of time. And then the goal is for you to go back into your normal daily life with an entirely new perspective. And my goal with all of this is to change the way people's brain functions forever. I like to teach staff heavy club and mace together because it's a complete idea. Heavy club swinging 
restores the rotational coordinates in training better than anything else. There's absolutely nothing, nothing in the gym that mimics what heavy club does. No cable rotation machines, no slam balls. None of that really does what heavy club swinging does. We take away all the supports and we force people back into doing what the body is doing. And then we run it into mace. So you see the intermediate complexity, intermediate weight, intermediate weight. And then we jump it to mace where it's higher complexity, but there's no impact. Mace is still a way to train for something in particular. And the thing that you're actually training for with mace is something like staff fighting. Uh, staffs and levers define humanity. Um, staffs are the basis of all tools. A shovel is a lever. A hammer is a lever. A sledgehammer is a lever. An axe is a lever. Uh, a pickaxe is a lever. All of those levers very specifically are the things that are responsible for the development of human civilization. The way our hand functions, the way it functions with our shoulder, the way it functions with our core, that all goes into building civilization as we know it. Uh, but below building civilization is just swinging staffs for the concept of self-defense. This is the origin of all of humanity. Um, if you watch 2001 A Space Odyssey, you see it. They pick up the bone and they have a lever for the first time ever. And then that starts humanity on its trajectory forward towards tool use. Um, so I like to teach this with staff because in staff people, we don't explain to people, we have people learn experientially exactly what the most important movement patterns in all of sports are. Below basketball, football, lacrosse, below any of that, lies an underlying basic series of human movements and that is the most important thing learning to not get hit one by moving two by putting something between you and something that's coming at you and then learning to respond to that mm -hmm. uh, so think of the blocking part as being an overhead press um, and you see overhead presses in absolutely every form of training olympic lifting kettlebelling uh clubbing macing uh you see it in med ball slam ball uh, sandbag, uh, because it's super important, but we want people to figure out why they're doing an overhead press by providing them an input. Then we take, and we turn it into the response movement. And that's where we get to heavy club swinging shield casts, gamma casts, uh, and then into milling patterns, milling being casting patterns or throwing patterns inside and outside with both sides of the body. Um, you can kind of mimic that in the gym with a med ball, but it is not even the same because with a med ball, you have removed the lever, the thing that defines humanity. Um, and then once we start stepping, we start stepping in a very specific way. It's not just a lunge forward or a lunge back. It turns into a warrior stance from yoga. If you let absolutely anybody run the experiment, they will learn those three things on their own, and then they will understand the value of it forever. They will understand the value of an overhead press. They will understand the value of a shield cast, uh, two hand and single hand. They will understand the value of a mace 360, a mace 10 to two. And then we put those into stepping patterns, stepping forward and stepping back, which are the warrior, warrior stances from yoga, warrior one, warrior two, and yeah, warrior one, warrior two, and warrior three is kind of a transition between the two, if you think of it. Um, so we teach these things in order, and we do this as a neurological pattern to have people practice one thing, go up in complexity, go to the next thing, and then start the learning pattern over again. So that there, once people get through five days of this, the goal is to alter the structure of their brain forever and show them why things matter. Uh, I want to get away from telling people why things matter and have them learn it on their own for themselves. And then they will never, ever, ever forget it. Uh, so that's the idea of the way that we're teaching. Um, and then we just keep adding complexity into the staff idea and we evolve up everything over the course of five days. So we start with those pure basic ideas. We have people practice them. We repeat the learning cycle, but we add a step. Then we repeat the learning cycle. We add a step. We repeat the learning cycle. We add a step. 
And the idea of this is that we start simple and by the end of the week, people are at a level of complexity that they didn't think was physically possible for them. Mm -hmm. But the basics become so basic to them and they become so valuable that they will start running the training in this way forever. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a nerdy, complex <laughs> idea, uh, but we do think about it a lot. I, I think about this stuff a lot because yeah. I would like people to go through that hero's journey two or three times a day inside of a bigger hero's journey, which is the five day getting there uh, to Thailand, getting there, getting there to Thailand. So anybody that hits me up because I have a whole retreat page built out, I'll make sure to put it in the link. Um, it's going to be January 4th through the 9th. And I get questions on like, what is the content that we're going to be learning? So I'm just going to send them this YouTube video so they can hear your the total like explanation explanation that you just gave because I think that will really inform people on the deep why because it's it is hard to explain that on a retreat page that that's what you're going to be doing but you're you're literally returning to the most primitive style of training taking out the need to understand it from a more scientific lens and actually doing and you leave you'll leave a completely different person side note on that we will be flying out and shipping all of the mace and clubs and stuff so you don't need to worry about any of the equipment and even staff we're going to make sure all that stuff is there ahead of time so that you can just travel there and then we have somebody that will pick you up and bring you to the retreat center uh, private retreat center and take care of everything so uh, that is people can i think people should definitely if they want to ship heavier clubs as well ship heavier clubs if you want to ship your 35s or your 45s or bring them on the plane. I've done that all over the world, 45 pound club, put it back in a box, wrap it up in a bunch of cardboard and you can get that on a plane as well. Um, and I do want to encourage people to not only use a light heavy club in the 15 pound range, but a 20 to 25 and to also drag along your personal clubs because you're building a relationship with your equipment by doing that. I have dragged my equipment all over the surface of the planet. <laughs> very I one. have kettlebells that have been to 12 countries and I love those kettlebells. And I have clubs that have been all over the surface of the planet and you build a relationship with your own equipment. Um, and I really enjoy that because you build that, that thing matters to you after you do something like this. And you, you're just more likely to use it and to want to use something if you've dragged it around with you. It becomes a part of your training identity forever is a weird way of thinking about it. I 100% support that. And I mainly mean I'll be sending the seven pounders because most people don't have seven pounders. And then the staff, the cold steel staff will be just, be just making sure we're well stocked with those and then a few. So yeah, totally bring your heavy stuff. That is a very good point to build a relationship with your tool. But in the event that is challenging for you, just hit me up. I'm happy to help you out with that. Um, that is all the time we have for today. Thank you so much, Mark, for taking this interview. And yeah, this is just a ton of information. We have one other workshop on the books for 2023. It's in London. That will be hitting uh, the Flowshala website, just Flowshala dot com slash workshops is where you find all of our workshops for the year. And we're doing uh, a we're making a big effort to get all of our workshops up for the calendar year so that you can plan ahead and know that when we're going to be in your region, because these workshops are strictly in person. They're not offered virtually. Uh, thank you, Mark. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, Sam. See you guys soon. Bye.